You're listening to The Weekend Take, and now your host, Sean Schaefer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Weekend Take. I'm your host, Sean Schaefer. Stepping in to join us as an extra special guest this week is Christopher Schiller, who's writer, director, producer, entertainment attorney, and columnist for Script Magazine. You may remember Chris as our first special guest on The Weekend Take in our first episode, but due to the learning curve of the show and the change in format and the baby steps of the show, Chris was unable to get his special guest segment as all of our guests since him have. So here he is today for a bit of redemption, I'd say, and (laughs) to get his special guest segment. Chris, thanks for stepping in and helping out. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Better late than never, I guess. I mean, well, we certainly appreciate it. And I'm, I'm sure being the surprise guest on today's show is just as much of a surprise to you as it is to all of our listeners. Definitely was a surprise, but I'm happy to uh, pitch in. I've got always have a lot to say about the films and the movie making process. So I'm happy to help out. Chris, as I mentioned, you're a writer, director, producer, entertainment attorney, and columnist for Script Magazine. Now, since you were on the show, uh, your article that you had, were discussing on the show has come out when we were discussing Bird Box and choosing the right format for your for your film when looking at exhibition. Have you had other articles released since then that you could tell the folks about? Yes. Um, just a, a day or so ago, I uh, published a new article about throwing in the towel, when to know how to do it and how to do it properly so it doesn't come back and slap you in the face. Great. That's awesome to hear. And I'll be sure to put pertinent links to everything in the episode description below. Tell the folks at home a little bit more about yourself and what you do and kind of, I guess, your journey to this point. Okay. Well, it's a long and winding road is quite a number of people probably have the same similar style of story. Started out a long time ago in broadcast news and learned as much as I could from the technical end of that kind of production structure. Got very good at a whole bunch of things and was often answering questions about what ended up being legal aspects. And uh, because I had uh, an inquisitive mind and figured it out on my own, I was often answering those questions for others, decided, well, let me turn around and go to law school and get the entertainment law uh, under my belt so that I can answer those questions and actually get paid for it. And so I took the route to uh, interrupt my career for a few years, go to law school in Los Angeles. I went to um, uh, Southwestern School of Law, got the degree, became a New York uh, attorney, and uh, was able to parlay all that into a viable working entertainment practice and keep my hand in the production side of things as well. So I've got a few projects that I've produced, a few things that I've created myself. I'm currently producing a documentary film uh, that you may be aware of. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's a whole bunch of irons in the fire, but as long as I keep everything moving and people haven't gotten tired of me doing one thing, I can move to another. Because of that diversity of interests, I was approached to start writing a column about the business and legal aspects of the film industry from a screenwriting perspective predominantly. And that has been going on at scriptmag.com for almost six years. So I've been uh, putting it out there and answering questions. And I love to be a resource to be used uh, to make things better for everyone who's trying to struggle through this industry and make things work for themselves. In this article that you've just released about throwing in the towel, that was it with regards to a screenwriter or just any person in the film industry that may be considering it? I try to at least be uh, a tangentially attached to the screenwriting perspective, but I also branch out into writing articles that could be understood by um, independent filmmakers that are approaching things, people approaching a film from a script perspective, be it a narrative or a documentary. I try and stay as broad a topic as possible, and the starting point is always scripts. And so in this particular case, I used a lot of examples about writing scripts and knowing when that script is not going to go forward all the way. Understanding if you've got a, a, a script that's based on some event that loses its notoriety or factors change dramatically. And so the script is no longer something that is uh, dying to hit the screens just by matter of time past and it's no longer a viable 
project. So this the article is an approach to how to listen for that, how to take that in and recognize it as if every road is leading uphill, then maybe you're not going to get out of that rut and you can set it aside and move forward to the next one. The entire spectrum of creative endeavors can benefit from most of the articles I write. And I just try to take that approach and push it forward. And people seem to like it. I get uh, lots of good feedback from the articles I write. And uh, I get ideas for the next one, often from people who are responding to previous things that I've done. As long as I keep thinking of things to write about, I'll keep writing those columns. So keep reading them. Now, as a writer, director, and producer yourself, you said you've created your own pieces, uh, one of which uh, I worked with you on, which was Key Transitions. Mm -hmm. Wearing so many hats, is there one in particular that you, you favor? I most enjoy writing because it is the place where I can do my most creative without the boundaries of limitation. I really enjoy directing when I'm able to assist people to reach their potentials. You don't always have the time you need in a director's chair or the money you need in a director's chair to be able to get everything that's possibly there. When you're sitting behind a keyboard and nobody's expecting the spec script that you're writing, you can take your time. I've got scripts that I'm really enthused about that I've been working on for years. And there's other pieces of work that I can knock out in a few days and I'm just as proud of. I'm not limited by the time frame. I'm not limited by production structure or schedules to get certain things out the door. I find writing is almost cathartic. I get to express a unique perspective and that's my go-to. That said, I'm currently producing a documentary film where I am taking the facilitator role as a producer, where the lead producer director is running with his ideas as to where he wants to take the documentary. And I am providing that facilitation, trying to figure out how to get him where he needs to be to be able to successfully get those. And that's just as fulfilling. It's just in a different perspective. Every role that I've done in my career has a good and useful and targeted thing that I really enjoy. And every one of those roles I relish when I get to serve in them. There's a, a saying that I heard and kind of gleamed on to is that if you are the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You want to be surrounded by people that are smarter than you, that can figure out the problems that they're in charge of so that you don't have to come up with, a, with every solution. And once you find those people, you keep bringing them back on board because they've proven themselves that they're not only smart and can figure things out, but also like to work with you and figured out how to work with you. There's a simpatico relationship going as a collaborative group forward with a lot of these filmmakers who use the same cinematographer all the time. You have cinematographers who use the same crew when they go out on, on sets. And it's not because they're trying to be old boyish and always use the same networks. These people work. This works. I know that you regularly visit some film festivals, particularly Telluride Film Festival, correct? That is correct. I'm an annual attendee, including this year. I, I was lucky enough to get my passes before they sold out. Any particular reason why Telluride specifically, or I suppose say Toronto or South by Southwest? Every successful fe film festival has an ability to find its voice. And when you find a voice that speaks the same way that you like films, you're attracted to go to that festival. And especially if it's run by people who really are passionate about films, films and filmmakers, then you find that connection. I found that with a few film festivals in, in, in the past. And because of a, a familial tie with the town of Telluride, I was aware of its probably a lot earlier than most of the listeners about its cachet in the place to watch films is always a place of cinematic reverence. And it's hard to be in a grumpy mood when you step out of a theater and look up at the Rocky Mountains in such a serene environment. And the approach that they take is we are looking for the best films out there. And that's what we bring. And we bring very few of them. Telluride's usual take in is maybe two dozen of the brand new films. They also bring in 
a whole bunch of the restored classics, the silent films and the, the, the films that haven't been seen in a long time. And so it's got that dichotomy of attraction. It's picked the cream of the crop to show. In the manner of the four days of the festival, you see the best films that are there. And so just the quality of the town, the quality of the films, and the atmosphere they create to present those films is all attractive to me. And there are a number of other film festivals that find a niche that defines them as a festival. They're not just a place to go see movies. There's something about the festival that has a character on its own. And finding a character of a film festival that matches what you're looking for as a film viewer. That's a marriage that can't be dictated. You have to find it on your own and gravitate to the ones that attract you. Telluride does it for me. I'm sure that Venice does it for others. Can would do it for some uh, who can afford to get to France and see the cream of the crop in its nascent form. To summarize, I think that uh, Telluride has, for me, been the ideal connection of what I'm looking for in a, in a film festival. And I think that everyone has to find that ideal film festival for themselves. I found mine. I tell people to go find theirs. And um, I know some people who love to go to Sundance. Me, not so much. But everybody has their own flavors. And I think that's something you need to find as a film goer is to understand what your tastes are and find things that cater to those tastes best. And you'll be happy. Looking ahead in 2019 now, what is on your plate for, for 2019, either as a writer, a director, a producer? What, what can we expect coming over the horizon for you? The documentary that I'm working on is the one solid project that's got a timeline and an end date where it will be finished and, and out the door within a year's time from now. There are quite a number of other projects I have in process. I have several scripts in development. I just recently finished writing a, a pilot script that may or may not go into production in some form during this next year. And I've got uh, feature films scripts that are kicking around in the hands of producers being weighed whether or not they're willing to put the dedication and, and financial resources behind and taking it to the next stage. Like I said earlier on, having as many irons in the fire and having them in different places in the fire so that they're all at different levels of investment of time and energy and ability to take it to the next stage. And uh, I'm always open to jump on board other people's projects when there's an opportunity that I can bring something to the table that will make things better and move things forward forward. If I see the opportunity to move forward, it might be the right next thing. And of course, I imagine there'll be more articles for, for Script Magazine in 2019 from you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every time I come up with a new cool idea to write about something or something uh, needs to be written about to uh, help clarify the air, you'll see them pop up and hopefully you people will like to read them and, and give me feedback as to what I might want to pursue next time. If someone wants to connect with you and reach out to you or connect via social media, how's best one could, could get in touch with you or look at some of your work? I'm pretty accessible. Christopher Schiller is usually the, the key word you need to, to look for either on on any social media platform I use. The, I don't hide behind anything else. My production company is called Bright Idea, B-R-I-T-I-D-A.com. I'm available on all the, the normal social media structures. Uh, you can also read my column at scriptmag.com. You can search for my name there. Just uh, I'm accessible through those medium and people send, seem to listen Listen to my rants or follow me on, on Twitter, at Chris Schiller on Twitter. I may not be as active on some of them as others, but uh, you could find me in any one of them. Thank you for taking the, the last minute call to, to step in and be able to, as I mentioned, redeem yourself for not being able to do your your guest segment in our first episode because we hadn't quite found our footing in our format yet. Yeah, I find that this podcast will evolve over time 
And as you get more and more attuned to what works and what doesn't and what appeals to you and your listenership, you'll find the heart of exactly how to to do this. And I'm glad that you're enjoying it and moving forward with it and the audience is building. I'm happy to be a participant. Thank you very much, Chris. And that about wraps it up for us here this week on The Weekend Take. I want to thank Chris Schiller for stepping in and contributing his thoughts the Weekend Take is on social media as well. We're on Twitter at Weekend Take. We're on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash The Weekend Take. And please check out our Patreon page at www.patreon.com backslash The Weekend Take, where for as little as $1, you can become a patron of The Weekend Take and get exclusive access to extended cuts of the episodes if you want to hear more of the conversation had this week and any of the previous weeks with some of our guests. So until next week, I hope you all enjoy your week ahead and... I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to The Weekend Take. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Google Play and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Visit our Patreon page to become a patron of The Weekend Take. And for as little as $1, you'll receive exclusive content and perks.